You're on there, Sally. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm um, I'm trying to be particularly careful tonight. It feels like Friday, but it's not. It does. Those of you here going to work in the morning saying, no, it doesn't. <laughs> but, uh, we'll know that in the morning. But I'm trying to take particular care tonight to not have my Your finger my <laughs> finger stuck up there like I did the other night. I don't know how I was holding the phone. You had your, the other but, hand. Then you had your fingers up there. I guess I had it turned the other way. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I want to share with you guys something that I think will touch your heart. And uh, as much as I'm enjoying this, we're going to have to stop this, honey. Go ahead and pause it. Um, as it said on the on the uh, label here, we went and ministered at the Hell County Jail today, which we usually do on Thursdays. And um, today, we didn't get to see the guys when we went in. It was just the girls, and the, the jail was real busy, and so they couldn't get to where they could release the guys to come out. But we had this, this group of girls that we've had for probably four or five weeks now. Mm -hmm. Most of the same ones, and we're getting to know some of them. And listen, listen, this is so precious mm -hmm. because of these girls. There's probably about five or six that are constant that we see every week. Right. And I'm not going to share any names, but one in particular, this has blown my mind. I, we share the same thing with them that we share with you, which is, and please hear this, because this is the pretense for the little piece of testimony that I'll share with you. First thing, there were probably how many today? Twelve? Eight? eight? Mm -hmm. There were eight girls, okay? And the first thing we ask is, is there anyone here that's never asked Jesus into your heart? Right. Not one. Okay. Everyone, oh. listen to this, every oh, one of them are Christian girls locked up in jail. Some of you watching right now have been a Christian all your life and you probably have, you may be half lit, you may be high. And that, 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 why do we wind up like that? Why did I for so many years? But you know what? That even though they're in jail, there's there's still uh, you can be out in the world and still and be still a be prisoner. in jail. Exactly. Yes. yes. And and so I look at these girls, and they've they've accepted Christ, and I believe them. Yeah. I, I see it in their eyes. And so we tell them, listen, listen, you're sitting here in an orange outfit now, and you're in jail. And yet you gave your life to Jesus Christ maybe when you were a little girl. And I'll tell them, Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And I'm telling you the word of God. Hear this, child of God. And these girls, their eyes get so big and tears start rolling down their cheeks. And will say, listen, you're a child of the king. The Holy Spirit lives in you. And you fell to somebody's lies. Some God pulled you in or or something pulled you into this, and here you sit in jail now, but you're a child of the king, and you're a daughter of the Most High God, and they start to come alive. And listen, that's been now for weeks that we're sharing it with them. Oh, and I wish this was happening more in our yeah. church, yeah. and it is with some. There's, there's a handful of you right here tonight that you're hearing it too, but they're starting to believe it, and they're recognizing it, and they know they don't belong where they're sitting in jail anymore. They're, they're paying for what their flesh got into. Some of us have gotten away with it in our flesh. But their spirits are starting to recognize they're children of God and they're beloved. And we look at them and they're beautiful. Yes, they they're are. They're absolutely they are. beautiful, yes. as are the guys when they come out. But today, one of the girls in particular, one of the girls in particular had a testimony. And this is, this is what we preached on. This is what we shared on with her. I'm just going to read you these few short verses from Romans 8. And she's sitting there the whole time, tears rolling down her face. And the, the Bible says in Romans 8, starts at verse 5, it says... For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And they've been hearing this for four or five weeks now, and they're hearing it in their heart. But ye, here's the key. Listen, this is for you. This is for somebody watching right now. But ye are not in the flesh. You're in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So you got two ways to go here. Either you're a child of God, and maybe you just don't realize, and you hadn't been listening to old Terry tell you long enough, the Spirit of God lives in you. Stop being defeated. You're not... 
we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us in the same chapter there. Greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. First John 4, 4. You're above all this stuff, but you've got to hear it. You've got to hear the word of God and you've got to let it rise up in you. And I preached that message again there today. And when I finished, I said, does anybody want to share anything? Does anybody have a word? And this girl looks like on a bad day, she could whip me. But she's, just, but she's so soft looking and so gentle. And she says, I got to tell you, I got to tell you something. And we said, tell us what it is. What's your, what's your story? And she said that when they locked me up, when they booked me, I gave them my name, but it's not the way that I always go by my name. It's not what's on my normal papers. And she said, I've been calling my lawyer. She said, I should have gotten out. She was doing a, a local time. She said, I should have gotten out last week. And I've been calling my lawyer and calling my lawyer, and he's never returned any of my calls. And she said, just today, he finally got back a hold of me like, who are you? Why do you keep calling? And she told him, then he found out, oh, I'm supposed to be representing you. That's not the name that I had. And she said she was livid. She said she was so angry. And she said, about that time, they called and said, about to have church. There, Everybody's meeting outside. And she said, I ain't going. God, if you... God, I'm not going. At the, yeah, here I am stuck in here. I should have been out a week, 10 days ago. And this lawyer's not even taking my call because they didn't have my name right. And then she said something happened and something spoke into her heart. And she, and she said it just came out of her mouth. She said, I'm going. I'm, I'm going go. to church too. So she came out and we shared this message. And at the end, and she's telling all this, and she said, I heard my flesh was trying to take over and be angry again. She said, the same flesh that got me in here. Mm -hmm. But the spirit, she said, I know I've got to make a decision. And I've got to say, God, listen, here's what she said that had me and Sally in tears. God is in control. Yeah. Even when everything is not working the way I want it to go, I believe that God is in control. And she just took over and started testifying, and everybody started listening to her. Guys, listen to me. She's sitting, sitting right now. She's sleeping in a cold jail cell mm -hmm. in an orange jumpsuit, locked up in jail. And she said, God is in control. I believe he lives in me, and I'm coming out of here never to come back. I'm never coming back here. I'm a new creation, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. If she can do that in jail, can you not do it where you're sitting right now? Right. Stop being defeated by the devil. Man, Stop man. being afraid of COVID. Stop being afraid of the election results. Stop being afraid of all the things that are happening right now and realize the creator, yeah. the ultimate shot caller lives in you. Yeah. And the only way you can come to that realization and walk in it is by faith. It's all faith. Mm -hmm. And again, faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God, Romans 10, 17. So hear what old Terry and Sally have shared with you tonight. Let it go into your heart and what something's stirring in you. Mm -hmm. Don't you discard that. When you get off here, pray. Just say a simple prayer. If you're setting this and your family's watching TV, act like you got to go to the bathroom. Go back to the bathroom, get on your knees a minute and say, Lord, I want to know this. I want to know again that I'm your child. I want to know that I'm precious and that nothing can happen to me except what goes across your desk for approval yeah. when I'm walking in your will. Yeah. We've grown a culture of Christians that just, just repeat, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm blessed and highly favored while the world's going to hell. Maybe they're making more and more money and their friends and their families turning their back and their kids are out of control. Let's learn that blessed and highly favored is in here. Right. It's in here. It's peace. Yeah. And sometimes you be poor as I am and be blessed and highly favored. That's right. Well, one of the things that we, when we talked about it, what, what you brought up to her so much, uh, to all of them today, was that when, when you seek the Lord, you seek him with your whole heart, he is there. He, he, Amen. He is to be found, but he wants us to because seek him. He longs to be sought he, he, for. He does. My phone. That's okay. <laughs> but but um, anyhow, just seek him with your whole heart, and he will be found. He'll that's, not turn you away. Things, yeah, he won't turn away, and he won't forsake you. He just won't do it. So, Amen. Yeah. So we're going to say a quick prayer now, and you pray this along with us in your yeah. heart, okay? Yeah. Lord, I thank you for those that are hearing this now, not just with their ears, not just seeing with their eyes, but Lord, something's stirring in their heart and they know this is them. I pray, Lord, that you'll put a hunger in their heart to seek after you. You love us. 
You love us so that you sent Jesus to suffer and die on the cross for us. You love us just as much right now. And Lord, if we're in sin, if we're falling away, if we're backslidden, if we haven't been to church in years, all we have to do is turn our eyes toward you and say, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. And immediately we're right back in your fellowship. Mm -hmm. And you'll draw us in. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that you'll cause people to rise up in these dark days. When churches, attendance is falling off, people are falling away, aren't listening to the word of God anymore, raise up your people. Because, Lord, your word has never changed and it's still as solid as it ever was. Bless those that listen and let them know that you love them and we love them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And it's Amen. time to go get the table, Terry. Oh, that's my sister-in-law. <laughs> you guys, we love you. We love you and God love bless you. you. Seek his face and you'll yes, find him. Exactly. God bless y'all. Bye, Sally. Bye. Good night.